On November 19, 2003, Stephen King was awarded the National Book Foundation's prestigious Medal for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters. The recipient of the medal is a person who, in the opinion of the Board of Directors of the National Book Foundation, has enriched our literary heritage over a life of service or corpus of work. The following is a live recording of that event. Walter Mosley introduces Stephen King. It is an honor and a pleasure for me to introduce to you the recipient of the Medal for Distinguished Contribution to American Letters. It's a blessing that this recipient is Stephen King. There is no writer in America more worthy of recognition for his contributions to literature, to literacy, and for his generosity to writers. This mark of distinction is not only meant for Mr. King, however, but it is also a tribute to his readers and his connection to their world. Most of the great writers throughout history have been extraordinarily popular. These writers range from Homer to the nameless author of Beowulf to Shakespeare to Dickens to Mark Twain. They have told magical tales of brutality and grace and of sinners and redemption to the common man and woman. They tell us stories about our lives and the forces, either real or metaphorical, that govern those lives. Greatness in literature is anchored in the experience of the age and then later judged by the depth of that experience. Universities do not dictate this greatness. Day laborers and seamstresses do. Political movements do not define the value of this literature because a well-told tale lives on in spite of the censor and the zealot. And because I believe these words, I realize that all I have to do to present Mr. King is to talk about our world. It's no surprise. We live in dark times, extraordinarily dark times. Malignant forces roam free in the land and threaten us in our daily lives. These modern-day horrors come from the most pedestrian, the everyday aspects of our lives. The mailbox, the airplane, gas in our cars, our buses and subways, even our paychecks. There is famine and war and terrorism throughout the world. There are also random acts of inexplicable violence in the workplace and in schools. The existence of these dangers causes an equally dangerous reaction in us. We limit our own freedoms and send our children off to die while our prisons are overflowing with the myriad responses to hopelessness. Most of us are conscious of how alone and small and unprotected we are. Maybe this has always been true, but lately we've been forced to face our frailties. Cambodia is not so far away as it once was, nor Rwanda or Bosnia. And like the victims of these far off, and for most of us, almost mythical places, we have very few he heroes, very few chronicles to tell us what to expect or how to act. Sounds like one kind of Stephen King novel. A story. Sample complete. Ready to.